I need to first of all explain what a financial system is. The best way to describe a financial system is by using a diagram. So the financial system has got three very key um, institutions or variables, if you wish. These are the surplus units. Surplus units. Individuals and institutions who have excess money or um, they have money um, that they do not have immediate use for. So those are the surplus units. This middle rectangle here is the intermediary. For consistency purposes, I can put it in capital letters. Intermediary. Mediary. Intermediaries. These are the institutions that provide or that are the middle, um, act as middlemen. They are the middle ground between the surplus units and the next uh, um, rectangle, which I'm calling the deficit units. Units. Like I'd mentioned a little while ago, that the surplus units are individuals and institutions that have got excess funds. Individuals. Institutions. That have, got, that have got excess funds. So what do they do with the excess funds? They pump them into intermediaries. Then some of the intermediaries, as examples, include stock brokerage firms, commercial banks, and depository institutions, other depository institutions. So you can just give um, an example over here, banks, insurance companies. Companies, like that. The deficit units are the individuals and the institutions that are in need of the money. Individuals as well as institutions. That. So the financial system exists or these institutions over here that exist operate within um, a market economy. And that is what you're saying is a financial system. A system that tries to allocate funds from the surplus units to the deficit units. That is the definition of a financial system. Now, once we define a financial system, we need to understand the functions of the financial system. The first function, over here, I can be able to put over here in, 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 in form of, let me say, maybe numbers, I can say is achievement of purposes of the financial system. The financial system exists to achieve certain purposes. The first one we will be looking at over here is um, um, we can say um, because we are saying the financial system um, um, has to achieve um, certain key roles um, we are saying that saving I'll be able to say another one over here borrowing number three issuing equity That and finally, I can come on this other side, say risk management. Now, within the financial system, the surplus units, the intermediaries, they seems it's not correct uh, um, spelling like that. Let me just briefly inter e r. I can write it again properly. Intermediaries. intermediaries that so we're saying that within the financial system um, individuals can be able to save 
um, or be able to perform the functions um, of saving. So we can say individuals are able to save within the financial system. So we are saying you can see that the surplus units can make deposits within commercial banks, um, which acts as a financial intermediary there. And they expect to get a rate of return over and above because they are deferring the usage of funds today. What happens is that they pump money into the commercial banks. And now, by extension, what commercial banks do is that they, they lend um, the money that have actually been deposited with them to the deficit units. As an example, um, we can do, we can, I can um, provide an, a very simple example. You can say if the surplus units, or rather, if the intermediaries, say commercial banks, um, provide the depositors with a rate of return of about maybe, say, 9%. So you deposit to the commercial bank, and they say that you deposit for us, we give you a 9% return on, on investment. What the intermediary does is that the intermediary now allocates those funds now to deficit units individuals or institutions that are in need of the money once they do that what happens is that they obviously issue a higher rate of return the higher rate of return could be maybe say 14.5 percent now so that because of the whole process that um, that is involved in the financial system they need to have to make profits uh, from um, the usage of the funds um, and that going to that are going to enable them to compensate the surplus units that's why they need to charge a higher rate so that um, the deficit units once they make up the payments and um, when you, you can put a very soft arrow like that and once they make the payments then they're able to also compensate the surplus units the nine percent um, return like that so that's how um, one of the achievements of purpose of financial system is saving. Individuals and institutions are able to save and able to get a rate of return um, on investment. Borrowing. The deficit units over here. Um, we say that individuals and institutions are able to um, um, get funds, obtain funds, funds at a fair rate, rate for investment, investment for investments. Which form of investments to open new businesses or to invest in their new business for expansionary purposes? And so they'll be able to most businesses and institutions or individuals. If you are saying they are a small scale enterprise, um, you can be able to obtain fine funds at um, fair rates of return, so that you can be able to grow your business. You can be able to invest in capital expenditures. You can be able to perform um, research and development, amongst other key things. Um, there, so this. Borrowing as well as saving um, contribute towards the achievement of purposes within the financial system. The third one here is issuing equity. Um, institutions or companies can obtain um, um, sources of funds. Can obtain funds. Let's just say can obtain funds by issuing equity to the market to the market that so what we're saying is that if an institution wants to raise financing if i can be able to probably demonstrate i'm using say this paper an institution assume an institution i want to obtain um, equity through the stock market so this is the instrument in terms of the number of shares that I actually have. I want to float, say, for example, 100,000 shares. So what happens is that I can be able to place them through an intermediary, say, for example, a stock exchange. Once I float the, th the shares through the stock exchange, then the stock exchange, by extension, will be able to avail those funds now to um, prospective investors, either institutional or um, individual investors. Now, those investors in this instrument will provide me with the much-needed financing. The moment I get the much-needed financing like that, I can now invest it in, um, say, expansion of um, the business. So we are seeing um, issuing equity um, provides an avenue 
for obtaining additional sources of finance for, for businesses there. And finally, under the achievement of purposes in the financial system, we are saying there is risk management. Under risk management, we can say that uh, um, institutions are able to manage risk through use of risk management tools. Management tools. Risk management tools may not be ordinarily available um, just when you walk out of the door. You, can, you don't expect to get um, a risk management tool maybe to, um, to cater for the risks of exposure towards your portfolio or towards your farm. So you're saying if this is a kind of risk, um, say this is the part um, that you're saying that you want to um, um, hedge yourself, hedge yourself against um, risk, what you can be able to do, um, there are available a um, number of tools within the financial system that can be able to assist you manage the risk inherent within, um, say, an organization or within a portfolio or um, a group of funds. So those um, risk management tools c include derivatives, amongst other key tools, value at risk, which is also a subset of a derivative instrument. So derivatives um, um, form or um, um, provide that risk management um, um, tool, um, provide that risk management uh, um, 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 that risk management technique that can be able to assist um, investors or institutions to um, hedge themselves against exposures towards risk. All of these four savings, borrowing, um, um, issuing equity, and risk management um, are within the achievement of purposes within the financial system. There and. With the, the role of the financial system, you're saying uh, the financial system can also assist in trying to also generate a level of return. So that is what you're saying. Um, um, number two there, um, return determination. In return determination, we are saying that there is a force of demand and supply that exists in economics. Um, the basic um, graph that uh, I'm sure you must have covered was the supply curve as well as the demand curve. That the demand curve always goes down there. And you are informed that there was an equilibrium price over here and um, that this is price, this is uh, quantity. That. So the financial system assists in the determination of the equilibrium price. The amount of the interest rate that borrowers are willing to borrow at versus the interest rate that lenders are willing to get. This is the equilibrium price at that point over there. So we're saying that the financial system, the financial system, provides a mechanism. for determining determining the rate of return that is fair for both borrowers and lenders. How much do lenders, how much are lenders willing to accept in form of, or how much are lenders um, willing to accept in form of return on investment versus how much borrowers are willing to pay up once they use um, the borrowed funds? That is what you're seeing um, is return determination. The third function of um, the financial system, come on this other side here. Third function is allocation of capital allocation of capital so we can write and say that um, um, we can say that uh, the funds 
the investors within a financial system as well as the providers as well as portfolio managers let's say as well as portfolio managers determine the optimal optimal allocation to its users in order to obtain a favorable rate of return so you what i'm saying is that the financial system creates a mechanism that funds can be allocated to its most efficient users so individuals who want the money yes they will be able to be provided um, the financing who now go ahead in turn and try to invest it in um, say um, fixed income securities equity securities amongst other asset classes so that they can be able to um, get a rate of return and um, to enable them to pay up um, the intermediaries who in turn go ahead and um, pay up um, the, the surplus units like that so those are the three major functions of a financial system um, achievement of purpose in the financial system is the first one then there is rate uh, return determination which i've already explained over there and the allocation um, of capital so as as far as um, our overview um, or our summary here is concerned, we have actually completed um, that uh, function um, or that uh, objective. Now we move on and look at the types of financial intermediaries. Let's look at the types of financial intermediaries. I can wrap this. The first type of financial intermediary includes brokers, dealers, and exchanges. Brokers, dealers, and exchanges.